So today I want to start my discussion on American options. So we've discussed American options uh, in the context of a, of a binomial model, but in these few lectures we're going to basically discuss American options in the context of continuous models. Okay. So before we actually go into the pricing of these options, let's basically understand what is the feature of an American option. So if you remember, if we had um, the underlying asset as a stock, and if this was time, this was uh, the price of the stock, and if, if let's assume that we basically have a stock that takes some random path like this, and let's assume capital T is the expiration of the option. So if you basically had a European call option, okay, a European call option, we could only exercise at expiration, okay, and if we exercise that expiration, the payoff is going to be S of T minus K, right? So European option basically the payoff was this, but we could only exercise the option at at expiration. The main difference in an American option is basically the payoff is pretty much the same, but we can exercise the option at any point in time. Okay, so we could exercise the option before the expiration as well. And if we were to exercise the option call option in this case at time t, then we would get S T minus K. Okay as the payoff. So we don't have to really wait till the expiration, we could exercise the option before expiration and that's basically is a feature of an American option. Now if you were to con if you were to compare a European option to an American option, basically you would see that American option gives you all the features of a European option, okay? The payoff at expiration are going to be exactly the same. Okay, but European option you can only exercise at expiration, whereas American option you can exercise at expiration and at any point in time before expiration. And because of this, American option prices are generally higher than the European option prices. Okay, because of this early exercise feature. Okay, uh, there are certain cases where this early exercise feature basically is not really that valuable. For example, if you basically consider stocks with uh, no dividend, then option, American options on that are uh, basically the value is the same as uh, um, a European option and that early exercise feature is not really that valuable. But in most of the cases, this early exercise feature would be quite valuable. Okay, And in the next few lectures, we basically want to understand how we're going to price these American style of options. Okay, But before we do that, we need to actually uh, understand a few important concepts and let's first talk about uh, stopping times. Okay, so in order to understand American options, we need to first understand what is stopping time. Now we've talked about stopping time earlier, and we had said that time, the stopping time basically is denoted by tau, small tau, and this basically is a random variable, okay, that takes a value in 0 to infinity. Okay, and what is basically is stopping time? Stopping time is basically the time at which we stop certain underlying stochastic process. Okay, so let's assume that we have a, a stochastic process x of t, and this basically is let's say the path taken by the stochastic process. If we basically stop the process at time small t, okay, or t star, then the decision to basically stop the process only needs to be done on the or, or needs to be taken on the basis of information available to us at time t. We cannot peep in the future and decide to stop the process, okay? We need to have some logic that basically only depends on the information that's available to us at time small t, okay? And depending on that information, we can decide to stop the process, okay? Mathematically, uh, stopping time basically can be written as stopping time less than or equal to t belongs to ft. This basically means that the decision to basically stop the process at time small t needs to be based on information available to us at time small t. We cannot look in the future. Okay, And if we never stop the process, then basically tau takes a value of infinity. Okay, And if you basically stop the process a certain time, then tau basically takes that time as the value. Okay, and it's a random variable because you know this basically is just one a path of xt. Um, xt could potentially take many many different ra random paths, and the decision to basically stop the process 
or, or the stopping time will basically vary depending on the path of the random process okay so that basically was stopping time now let's move on to another important concept called first passage time of a stochastic process to a level m okay so let's basically talk about that what is first passage time first passage time basically to a level m so here let's assume that this basically is level m okay now first passage time to a level m basically is the earliest time at which the process reaches a level m so here if this is level m the earliest time at which our process x of t reaches level m is given right here right this basically is going to be denoted by tau of m which is our first passage time first passage time as the name suggests first passage is the first time when the process basically reaches a level m and that is also obviously going to be a random variable okay and mathematically we can say tau of m is nothing but minimum time or the first time when the process xt reaches a level m okay and this basically is first passage time so the minimum time or the first time when the process reaches a level m now the question here is is first passage time a stopping time is this a stopping time okay now for this to be a stopping time the decision to basically stop the process needs to be only based on the information available to us till time t okay so let's see if basically that criteria is satisfied here so we basically if we say uh, we're going to stop the process the moment this, the the process reaches the level m that basically is a stopping time because we don't really need to depend on any information beyond uh, time t the moment we reach we, we are this process at any time t we, we know where we are or what is the value of the process and the moment the first time when we reach a level m when xt is equal to m we stop the process right we don't really need to worry about what future values this process is going to take okay we basically have taken a decision to stop the process the moment we reach level m hence this basically is a stopping time okay understood so basically we we said uh, we're going to define this uh, first passage time as the first time when the stock basically reaches a level m okay and we basically are saying that this basically is a stopping time because in order to basically stop the process at level m we don't really need to look in the future to decide if we should stop at, or stop or not our simple logic is the moment we reach level m we stop okay and that information is available to us at time t we don't have to look in the future okay so this is basically the first passage time tm is first passage time and first passage time is also a stopping time okay so hopefully guys that that thing was clear now if we look at, at a stop process let's basically assume that this basically is the value of our uh, this basically was m okay this basically is our xt and let's assume that this basically is the is the time at which we stop the process and what happens is when we stop the process the, stop, the process freezes in in um, in time so beyond this point the process would basically freeze in value okay before stopping time our process is basically going to be exactly the same as the original process after the stopping time basically we have frozen the process okay and stopping time uh, a stop process is given by x of t was our original process and we basically say if we stop the process at the first passage time then the process is basically denoted by this where this basically denotes minimum of these two values okay so the moment time basically exceeds tau of m this is tau of m the moment time exceeds tau of m the moment time is greater than tau of m okay our process from here is going to be x of the minimum of t and tau of m would be tau of m so the process would basically freeze at tau of m before this 
before Tm. So if Tm is less than T, okay, oh, sorry, uh, uh, T is less than Tm, tau m, then basically our process is going to be x of p because minimum of these two is going to be t is less than tm so minimum of this two would be t okay so till here the process is xt after this the process is x of tau m okay because it's frozen we stop the process so basically the process gets frozen so hopefully that was clear and basically from here we can see that if we basically if x of t if x of t was a martingale then the stop process is also a martingale why because before stopping the process this was same as the original process hence it was a martingale and after we stopped the process the process basically is constant and that basically is a trivial uh, form of a martingale okay in both both these uh, in, in, in this entire process we can see till here we were a martingale anyways and after this because we have frozen the process that basically is a trivial martingale hence a stop process is also a martingale and similarly you could see that if it was a super martingale okay uh, then a stop super martingale is also a super martingale because before stopping it's the original process it was a super martingale after stopping it basically is a martingale but martingale is another form of a super martingale okay mart uh, is a special case of a super martingale right and a sub martingale likewise basically a, a sub martingale a stop sub martingale is also a sub martingale okay so a martingale if you have a martingale then the stop martingale is also the stop process is also a martingale if we have a super martingale then the stop uh, then the stop process is also a super martingale and if we have a sub martingale then the stop process is also a sub martingale okay so hopefully that theory was clear we basically discussed what is a um, stopping time we basically looked at what is a first passage of time and we discussed that the stop process are basically also martingale or super martingale or sub martingale that's called optional sampling okay um, so with this background now we can actually look at um, some real examples and first example we're going to look at is basically a perpetual American put okay and we're going to see how we can price a perpetual American put okay and when we are doing that we basically are going to use stopping times and first passage time so let's see how we can actually price a perpetual American put <laughs> 